you're wondering, high school is nothing like High School Musical. I went to public school, no one's checking for God. Don't be that person, it is not a good look. You'll realize that your ride or dies are not actually your ride or dies, and this one is from experience. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, hello. I make Christ-centered content with the intentions of being a source of hope and a light, all while being a normal, transparent teenage girl. So yeah, let's get into today's topic. High school. It's a time where people either want to completely forget they existed, or it's a time that they want to so desperately relive. I'll be sharing seven do's and seven don'ts of high school advice, so it's a total of 14 tips that can all be done practically. This can apply to anyone at any stage of life, and it'll be from the perspective of a Christian. And this doesn't mean it can't benefit you if you aren't a Christian or if you aren't in high school, but I just wanted to put that out there first. Alright, let's get into the video. Do number one. Be yourself. You will be surrounded, and I mean surrounded, by people who look exactly the same, talk exactly the same, and dress exactly the same. People's personalities will be straight out of TikTok. Don't be that person, it is not a good look. And I get it, you wanna fit in. We all wanna fit in to a certain extent. But the cliche that be you because everyone else is taken is actually true. God did make you different. He made you original. There is only one you, so own it. Walk in the confidence that is found in being a son or a daughter of a king. Psalms 139.14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Even if you don't believe it yet, ask God to help you believe the truth that is found in this scripture. If you struggle with insecurities, you find yourself comparing yourself to others other people get to know who Jesus is. I had been insecure. I used to think that I had to wear what everyone else wore and I used to think I had to have what everyone else had to fit in. But when I really understood for myself who Christ was and how he intentionally made every single part of me, I began to see the beauty that is found in who he made me to be. You might feel like you don't fit in or that you stand out in a bad way. I get it. I could have been ashamed of who I was, the only one with a unique name, the only one with curly hair. It doesn't matter what color, what creed, what background you come from, we all deal with insecurities. Even famous people who meet the world's beauty standards, have economic and social influence, deal with this issue, and sometimes to the point of self-harm. Just to give an example, Katherine Schwarzenegger, married to Marvel superhero Chris Pratt, her father is the Terminator, or Arnold Schwarzenegger, and she is the great niece of John F. Kennedy. From our perspective, it might seem like she has it all figured out, that she has it all put together, but she wrote a book about her own battle with comparison and insecurities. So it's just a reminder that we're all in the same boat here. Just remember that your differences are your superpower. It's how Christ made you. So let people see Christ in you through that. Don't number one. Do not compromise. I'm telling you it is not worth it. Do not compromise. I didn't expect there would be many temptations in high school but there were. There will be parties, people will smoke at school, people might ask you if you want to vape, it all happens in high school. And if you have friends that are pressuring you to do the wrong thing, leave. Just leave. And you may be like, you're oversimplifying it. I can't just leave friendships, people, environments that I've grown so accustomed to. And you're right, it is hard to do that. But that's where I tell you, it's okay to be different. Be okay with being the only one who doesn't go to a certain party. Be okay with being the one who's not invited to certain things. Ask yourself, what am I gaining from this? 1 Corinthians 10 23 says, you say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. You say I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. Being a Christian is hard. It will cost you. And that's where you'll have to make the decision for yourself and ask yourself, who am I living for? Is it worth compromising my faith for people that are going to add zero value to my life except for maybe temporary satisfaction and social status? Truly ask yourself, what is the point in engaging with these people? Is it so I can fit in? If that's the case, these people are going to forget you and you'll forget them by the time that you graduate. And if they're pressuring you to do what you know is wrong, then that means they don't respect you, your friendship, your convictions, and your boundaries. So just leave. It's pointless. As Christians, our goal should be to follow Christ in all that we do, and that will require us to not follow the ways of this world. Will we mess up? Absolutely. Have I messed up? Most definitely. But if your goal is to glorify your maker, then ask him to empower you to make the right choices, because it's not by our own works or our own merit that we're able to do this. It's by his word and his spirit working in us. Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do number two. Watch your words. People will judge you by the way that you speak and the way that you carry yourself. Luke 6 45 says, For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. This verse is a reminder to you and to myself that we should be watching what we put into our hearts. We all make mistakes and words do slip at times, but that should really make us wonder what is inside of our hearts. The example that I gave of people's personalities being a copy and paste of TikTok should honestly not 
not be surprising. It just shows the truth that's in this scripture. Whatever you consume will consume you. If you're constantly consuming content, entertainment, and music that doesn't glorify God, then you should expect your conduct and your words to be the same. And let me just say that the transformation of the heart is not something that happens overnight. It's in the daily intentional choices that you make. It's in the Holy Spirit working in you and meditating on his word that your speech and your heart will begin to change. So if you wanna be an encouragement to others to speak words of life and wisdom, then make sure that what you're listening to, who you're surrounding yourself with, and what you're watching are all a reflection of that. Don't, number two, don't underestimate how God can use you. I didn't really enjoy my freshman and sophomore year and I didn't expect much out of high school, but I remember praying even since middle school that God would use me as a light at my school. I prayed that when people saw the way that I walk and the way that I talk that Christ's love and light would radiate through me and that it would all point back to Jesus and God has answered my prayers in almost miraculous ways. One of the ways that God answered that prayer was through this year, senior year. So we had a senior memoir video project and we had to talk about our entire high school experience, our senior years, and our future plans. We also had to include a song in the video and so the song that I chose was Wait On You by Maverick City Music and there was a reason why I put that song there and I had to explain it and so the reason why I put that song in the background was because I was in a season of waiting. Yes, I knew what college I was going to and I shared that with them, but I didn't know if I got into a specific program that would really help my career plans. And um, it was a program that I had really prayed about. I was just fine with whatever God had for me. And so I was in a season of waiting and I filmed the video. I remember it was on May 5th and I had said this. Here's the clip. And I wonder what they're gonna say. I don't know um, if they've responded yet, but I've made this video right now to say that I'm waiting. I'm waiting on God to see his goodness, to see what he has for me and I know that he'll come through. And so I had made that video in faith, believing that God would come through. And so I submitted the video, I submitted the assignment, and I was just like, God, if you're coming through, you're coming through. And if not, then it's okay. That's what your will is gonna be. And so presentations had gone on for two days and I had not heard a response from the program yet. The program had finally responded. So on the very last day of school, the video played and I was finally able to say at the end of my video, guys, I cannot make this up. God got me into that program. So I knew that through that video, through the intentional song choice, and through me waiting on him, he was able to be glorified. Another example of God using me through school was my sophomore year. So I had a teacher who shared her testimony with me and a few students, and I had felt in that moment God really telling me to pray for them. And so I felt like if I didn't pray for them, I would be disobeying what God told me to do. So I did. And at the end, my friends, my teachers, we were all tearing up. And I remember leaving that place. I was like, wow, I didn't know that God could be so present in such a secular place. I went to public school. No one's checking for God. No one's having prayer circles at school, but I was so amazed that in that moment, because I'd submitted myself and my own personal desires to his will, he was able to be glorified in that moment. So I want this to be an encouragement to you that even in a worldly environment, God still wants to use his people. God can use you as a vessel anywhere. If you feel that nudge to pray for someone or do something good for someone, it probably is God telling you to do it. There's no way that my own desire or my own flesh would want me to go out of my comfort zone and to pray for people. That's never something that I wanna do on my own, but it was his spirit empowering me to do it and my willingness to submit to his will. And through that, Christ was glorified. And in order for God to move and for God to speak, I had to be willing to be uncomfortable. But you never regret it at the end because you did what God led you to do. And this is an encouragement to all the young people. First Timothy 4.12 says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and impurity. Do number three, grow your relationship with God today. This is so crucial because in a blink of an eye, you'll be graduating and graduation means adulthood. In adulthood, you'll be making decisions for yourself, whether they be good or bad. But what will your foundation be? The faith that you built or didn't build during your high school years will determine your relationships, your character, and the way that you view God in the future. So don't think, oh, when I'm in college, I'm gonna have the time to read my Bible, to study his word. Chances are you're gonna be a lot more busy in college, managing the balance between life and adulthood and school than the responsibility that you have in high school. So use today to grow your relationship with God. Here's a practical tip. For a moment, just think about your normal daily routine. What areas, what slots of time do you have to put in something spiritually beneficial? It can be right when you wake up, it can look like listening to Christian music as you're driving to and from school, or it can be listening to a podcast or a sermon in whatever time that you have. But I just wanna say that there should not be a substitute to reading the word of God and prayer. Those are essential. And if you're thinking and you feel like there's no slots of time available in your day, then that means that you need to sacrifice time. The biggest sacrifice that I made was giving God my mornings. I woke up an extra 30 minutes every single day before school to pray, to read my Bible, and to study the word. 
word. And if this is all sounding like a daunting task, then I don't want it to seem like this is all work-based, because it's not. And I don't want you to think that if you're not spending a certain amount of time with God, then you're doing it wrong. That's just not the case. God gives you grace every single time you fall. So give that same grace to yourself. Something I always come back to is this verse in a song by Elevation Worship, and it's called Available. And the verse says, for the one who gave me life, nothing is a sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice made for us through the death and resurrection of Christ is something that we could never do on our own. It gives us salvation and when you put that into perspective, you realize that there is nothing too big or too hard to sacrifice for God, for the one who gave you and I eternal life. Don't number three, don't compare yourself to others. Comparison is the thief of joy. And how to do this practically? Meditate on scripture and what God declares about you. For example, Romans 8:28. God is working all things for my good. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Romans 8.37 I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. This is more than just positive affirmations. There is a truth that the word of God carries. It speaks truth to you and me and it transcends time. And if you want to know more about the truth of God, I posted a video on it and you can find it right here or in the description box below. So speak the truth of God over yourself. And here's another practical tip. You can put a sticky note on your mirror writing down what the verse actually is and every single time you pass Ask the mirror, you recite that to yourself, or you just memorize the scripture every single morning that you wake up. Make sure that you're always in contact with this verse. You can see it wherever you're going. If you're driving, you can put a flash card right in front of the dashboard. You can put it on a mirror. You can see it in the kitchen. You can put it right in front of your sink whenever you wash the dishes. Just make sure that you're always encountering the word of God wherever you're going and speak it to yourself. And you'll see that there's a difference in the way that you view yourself and you'll see and actually believe what God's word says about you. Do number four, give yourself grace. And this is something that we should do throughout our entire lives. But the transition from middle school to high school can be rough. And if you're transitioning from different high schools, that can be rough too. And you'll probably look back at your high school self and cringe. I'm definitely guilty of doing that. But just give yourself grace. Classes get harder. Be honest with yourself. Understand that you're only human and you might have to sacrifice certain activities and events to get the job done. Make sure to keep watching so you're getting all the tips and all the advice. I'll also be sharing a very helpful devotional that can make all of this advice practical. Don't number four. Don't let material things define you. And this one is from experience. I remember sophomore year coming back from Thanksgiving break. I had celebrated my 16th birthday and I had gotten a lot of gifts from family friends. So I remember I had gotten checkered slip on vans. I had gotten a Nike jacket and I got AirPods. And I really thought that that was important. I really came back to school thinking like, wow, I am it. I have everything else that everyone else has. But I remember telling myself that I am finally the one who has AirPods like everyone else. I'm finally the one that has the same shoes as everyone else. And as I look back, that was a horrible mindset to be in. All the things that I had gotten were awesome gifts, but they shouldn't have been things that defined me or even added value to who I was. This can even look like being too attached to a sport that you play. If you're athletic, ask yourself, who am I without the sport? Who am I without tennis? Who am I without volleyball? Who am I without track? Is your identity rooted in your abilities or who Christ is? And please don't wait until these things are gone for you to realize that they could never satisfy you in the first place. Put your identity in Christ. It's the best thing that you could ever do. Do number five, be in a church community. And I understand that we can't just get up one day and choose to be in a church and in a godly community. But for me, I always had an alternative as to what the high school students would do on weekends. When there were parties, I got to hang out with people and friends that would strengthen my faith. I was always busy doing something with my church or for my church that would give me a distance from the temptations at school. I was serving and I was plugged into a community that was more fulfilling than anything that my school or my friends could offer me. And I don't want you to think that church is some boring place with rules and regulations. Being in a community of believers has been the biggest blessing for me. We have fun, we talk about real things, we build each other up, we pray for one another, and we just enjoy each other's company. So how this works practically. Finding a good Bible-believing church is just one Google search away. Go and visit different churches, look at their youth programs, see if you like it, and get plugged in. And if you don't have that community, pray so that God can provide that for you. Because having that godly community is what keeps you in check. It's what helps you grow into the person that you are meant to be. Don't number five, don't depend on friendships. I cannot say this enough. People will fail you. The person that you've been friends with since second grade will probably change. You'll see people's true colors. You'll realize that your ride or dies are not actually your ride or dies. I know that the popular group may look so fun and so cool, but trust me, they are the people with the most dirt, the most beef, and the most drama. 
So just keep your distance. Be okay with you. I'm not saying friendships in high school are bad. Had it not been for the friends that I had, I would not have enjoyed high school so much. But I kept my circle very small. But just don't make your happiness contingent upon people. Do number six, be friends with your teachers. And I'm not talking about the fake, hi, Miss Whatever, how are you doing? I mean to actually be genuine and to try to form relationships with them. And I'm not saying this to get a good letter of recommendation from them either. And this may not apply to every single teacher. Some of them will be reserved and that's okay. This might just be me, but I felt like sometimes teachers were more of a friend to me than students were. I got tired of the immaturity of high school and so I found it a lot easier for me to communicate with adults than it was with students. The teachers that I had gotten close to were there to support me, to guide me, and to give me advice. You don't really get that from friends because you're in the same boat with them together, but some teachers do have a lot of wisdom to share. You may also be wondering why I'm saying to be friends with teachers when I just advise you to not depend on friendships, but there's a difference between dependence on friends and having relationships that help you grow into the person that you need to be. Your teachers are the people that you're going to be around for about an hour every single day, five days out of the week for an entire school year and you might even have them again so being kind to them will make your high school experience much better don't number six don't have expectations or a bad mentality of high school if you're wondering high school is nothing like high school musical the movies romanticize high school and this time should not be your peak it should be the time that you grow into who you are I already knew what to expect going into high school because I had an older sister who had went through it so I didn't really think I'd enjoy it too much freshman and sophomore year I really disliked high school I saw it as a place I had to be Monday through Friday and then I saw the weekends as a time that I could be with my family and my church friends. Then the pandemic hit mid sophomore year and that changed everything. All of junior year was online and so I learned not to take anything for granted. My biggest prayer was asking God that I would never be ungrateful for the blessing that it is to just be in the presence of people. And that shift of perspective completely changed the way that I view high school. I used to say sophomore year that when I graduate high school I'd just peace out and never look back. But because of that shift of perspective that I had, I genuinely missed high school. Yes, I was looking forward to what the future had for me, but I had just enjoyed those four years so much. So just don't have high or low expectations of high school because you just don't know. And don't put pressure on yourself to absolutely love high school either. Just be intentional to enjoy every single moment. Another important mentality shift that I had about freshman and sophomore year changed my life and really saved me from so much stress. It always replayed in my mind. Do your best and God will take care of the rest. Do your best and God will take care of the rest. This stuck with me after listening to PJ Morton's song, Let Go. As I was studying for tests at home and at school and even when I was at my desk in the classroom ready to take the test, I would always tell myself, do your best and God would take care of the rest. And he always did. It helped me so much have less anxiety about my grades because I knew that I couldn't control what would happen after the exam, so I'd give it to God. There's no reason to stress over what you can't control. But there is a big condition to this. You can't expect God to give you an A on every test and every assignment if you have done no practice on your part, if you didn't study on your part. Can he give you an A? Absolutely. But that's just not how it always works. You have to put in your effort and you have to put in your time to study and to do your best and he will take care of it. So your expectations and your mentality have the power to determine how you see high school and ultimately how you view life. Do number seven, join clubs. And this isn't just so that you can look good for college applications, even though it definitely does help. But joining clubs really gives you the opportunity to have a community of people that you can relate to. Whether that's a common interest in hobbies like ping pong or community service or ethnocentric clubs or even faith-based clubs. And if there aren't any clubs at your school that you like, feel free to create one on your own. You can always ask a teacher that you trust for help and they can help you get that started. Trust me, it makes high school much more fun. Don't number seven don't care about what people think about you. What I mean by this is that you don't let what people say about you affect you. 90% of the times it's just our own brains, it's our own minds telling us that people are saying bad things about us. Well, that's not actually the case. And I don't mean to be careless, obviously watch the way that you carry yourself. FOMO is definitely real, but what saved me from so much disappointment was the fact that I didn't care about what people thought about me. I didn't care if I wasn't invited to the party that I knew everyone was going at that weekend because I knew that there was so much more to my life than the social status that I had at school. I knew that the hype of the weekend would eventually dissolve and sometimes even turn into drama that I just wanted to stay away from. What I realized was that the people who were the most insecure were the ones that cared the most about what people thought of them. Obviously, to not care about what people think of you is a lot easier said than done. So a practical tip that I have is that whenever you find your thoughts wandering, telling you that you aren't loved, or whenever you even encounter people that tell you certain things, just always remember to refute that with scripture. Meditating on the word of God and what he says about you. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture 
for their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. This is similar to the tip that I shared earlier, but there is so much power in memorizing and meditating on scripture. When God's word is what's on your heart, you'll find it a lot easier to refute whatever the world says about you, and you'll be able to see that that's not congruent with what the word of God says. Something that helped me apply this strategy and find the importance of this was a devotional by Craig Rochelle called Winning the War in Your Mind. I have the devotional linked in the description box below. I actually did this devotional with a friend and created a shared notes, and then we applied the truths of this devotional to our own lives. So I suggest that you share this video with a friend and do the devotional with them. That way you'll have accountability and you'll reap the benefits. I also have a graphic that you can screenshot right now that has a few examples of common struggles we endure and scripture you can declare over yourself to walk in confidence in the truth of who God created you to be. I know that a lot of us share a lot of struggles and so a few of the things that I've mentioned that you are seeing right now on the screen is depression and anxiety, shame, and doubt of self-worth. And these are all different things that a lot of us struggle with, but you can believe what God says about you by declaring the truth of his word over your life. Those were the seven do's and seven don'ts of high school. I really hope that you guys found this video helpful, whether you're in middle school, in high school, or college, whatever stage of life that you're in. I know that I only mentioned 14 pieces of advice, but I would really love to see if you guys have any advice that I haven't shared yet and comment it down below so that we can all learn from each other. Please let me know what type of videos you guys want to see. If you guys want to see a continuation of this, maybe a part two of advice for high school, or if you guys want to see more of a Q&A, a vlog, whatever it is, just let me know. That was it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone. Intruder or blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I took a break. My eyes got really tired. So then I got ice cream. Friends with the sec blah, 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 blah. It's me and to guide. Ah man, the back. Thank you for watching. No. Daddy, I'm probably gonna put in bloopers for this video.